What up, boys and girls, people of all ages, all you droniacs or whatever you guys want to call yourselves. Um, I don't know. I uh, got about half an hour. I'm on my way to work. Uh, it won't take me quite that long, but I got about half an hour until I got to be at my desk. And uh, just thought it would be cool to kind of chit chat. I uh, figure the topic of the day should be I'm headed to work. I work in the drone industry. Um, lots of chatter these days. Uh, I, I'm always getting you know questions and people asking like, "Hey, how did you, you know, move from being a chef in a completely different industry into, you know, now I've been working for almost two, two and a half years. Well, two years. It'll be two years in March um, in the industry um, at two different places. So, um, you know, that coupled with I think a lot of people these days are starting to question and ask, you know, like. How, how are these, you know, vloggers and these top FPV pilots in the freestyle game kind of starting to really make money, you know, they're, they're getting jobs, but they're also traveling and they're doing some things. Some people are questioning whether or not some of these guys are really as poor as they, they act like they are. And, you know, I, I don't want to get into any of that. I mean, I think everyone has their own living comfortability and their own level of what they can and can't live off of. I mean, dude... I'm 35 years old and between 21 and 27, we, me and my wife together lived off like $40,000 a year or less. So, you know, that's two people surviving. I mean, it, it doesn't take much to survive if you want to just survive. Um, and you know, you couple that with passions and stuff like that and a lot of work. I mean, a lot of time and effort that a lot of pilots and a lot of people put into what they're doing, um, takes them away from needing a lot of random crazy stuff that I think a lot of people spend money on. So, you know, as far as how people spend their money and what, how much money folks have, that's not what I'm really trying to get into here. Um, I do think people should realize and recognize you can't tell another person though, you know, what their money is worth or what they are worth or any of that. So let's, I think that's a question for other people, right? I mean, that's, that's not something I need to talk about. Um, but I think it's interesting that a lot of people want to be in the drone industry and a lot of people think that it's very unattainable or that people get lucky or people only get jobs because they know the right people um, and because they are somebody. Well, I, one of those things is correct, knowing the right people. And that's a life lesson, people. Like, I grew up learning that it's not necessarily what you know, but who you know, right? Um, I mean, yeah, you need to know what you need to know if you're really going to do a good job at something. But to kind of reach certain aspects and certain areas, um, it's most definitely who you know. And basically what that means is positioning yourself, right? Um, putting yourself always in a great position to find opportunity to then capitalize on. So, you know, that's the game. The game isn't anything silly or anything, you know, crazy or outlandish. It's if you're passionate about something, if you really want to do something, you really like something, you don't have to drop everything and go and just go do it and hope and pray that you, you know, make it. Um, you know, what I did, and just to give you kind of my path, I, I knew when I started playing with this stuff that I really, really wanted to get into it. And this was, you know, before FPV was really even anything. I mean, Sharpu and those guys and Trappy, obviously, and all these guys were still flying and doing FPV things, but it wasn't an industry as far as, you know, sales and stuff like that wasn't very high. Um, and entry levels and stuff like that were huge, high barrier entry levels. So, um, you know, I knew though, when I got into the bigger drone stuff that like, this was this wasn't just a game. This wasn't just toys. These were going to be, you know, things that the future were going to be built off of. And I, you know, in all reality, I mean, a lot of people saw this and said, Hey, this is going to be something. So if I understand what this is now, and then when people start to do this later and need these things, they're going to need experts. They're going to need people that know what the heck they're doing. Um, and sometimes an expert isn't just, you know, someone who went to college and has a bunch of book knowledge. Sometimes experts and expert opinions come from just experience, you know, um, you know, influencers and people like that in social media, they, they become experts a lot of the times because they've seen so many products. They've, they've touched so many different angles and, and areas of a, of a industry or of a product or wherever. And so I think that that's what a lot of people miss is, you know, I, I very quickly went through product after product after product after product and I was posting video and content and though it wasn't great content, like I was learning from everything that I did and I pieced it all together in a way that 
when I was having conversations in these opportunities that I had presented myself to have, I, I wasn't, I, I knew what I was talking about. I presented information that people needed, that people found, hey, I didn't know that and I was about to do this and now I know, thanks for saving me $200,000 and investing the wrong way or whatever it is, right? I mean, that's just a random thing I'm saying, but you know, these are the opportunities that you have to present who you are, what you are and what you do. And I've just always been who I am and what I am. Um, whether it be in this industry or on camera, whatever this is, or whether it be just at the restaurant when I was slanging, you know, slanging food on the on the grill, um, you know, I, I just am who I am, and I do what I do, and everything I do is to better the people around me and better the things around me to put myself in a better position. Because again, nobody's going to hand me nothing, right? Um, sure, I'll be given some opportunity, but it's up to the people given, you know, that are receiving opportunity to take advantage of it. So. I just think that it's interesting, you know, a lot of people want to get involved and a lot of people want jobs and stuff and I get a lot of questions and I see a lot of people ask, but I never really see a lot of these people doing much other than just asking. I just, you know, they, they think that it's like a, a switch. They think that it's like, hey, if I just meet the right guy and just tell him I'm into drones. No, man, like you got to like work to know what you're doing and do what you do. What's up, Daniel? What's up, Jamie? Uh, Jamie, dude, of all people. So like, this is where this was leading. Thank you for saying something because you're gonna lead me into where I wanted to go with this. Where I wanted to go with this was, I bet you there's tons of people in the industry you don't even know about. Um, there, <laughs> yeah, t hey, Troy, yes, dog, Litecoin, homie. Hey, what you should be doing, like I have for the past 90 days, or 45 days or so, stop putting your money in quads and put it in Litecoin, hell yeah. Hey, what's up, Chris? All right, back to the point. All right, so uh, this is the thing. Uh, there's already a ton of people like Jamie Camp. Oh, my God. Like, I met Jamie at CES recently, and I had already kind of known of him in the industry a little bit, but I didn't really know what was going on with him, right? Um, and these these big industry events and these big, uh, you know, CES and inner drones and stuff like that, this is where you start seeing and you start understanding. And I was lucky enough in 2016 to go to CES, and I think that's where my brain clicked like, yeah, this is really something possible, right? And so um, guys like Jamie, guys like his partner Mike and all these other guys, like there are tons of people in this industry behind the scenes doing stuff. Things behind the scenes quietly get done and are getting done at rates that people just have no idea. And it's really crazy because if you start being in that back room and, and all it takes is putting yourself there. And what I mean by that is you got an idea. You have an idea for somebody that has a company that's doing something that you're like, oh my God, they're just this far off from doing it 100%. Like if they did this, it would be legit, right? Email them, message them, call them. Get on the phone with them and tell them why you think so passionately that they are right on point except they're missing something and that with that something, that it could be something bigger, right? So that's the type of stuff that gets you in the back room. You start making those types of things happen, well then you start getting messages. Well then you start having other people message you. And what I do is I just connect dots. I mean, if I see anyone, I mean anyone that needs help, that I know somebody else has the ability to help, and I don't mean just like fixing a quad. I mean like these are people in the industry doing stuff. These are guys that I'm like, man, they have this hot new product, but wow, like they've got a great receiver, but they have no goggle or whatever, right? Like I'm like, man, I know a guy making a goggle. Let me hit that guy up and see if these two dudes want to work together. And then I just leave. Let them dudes do what they do. They make something happen to make something happen, right? But by doing those types of things, you'll find out that not everybody talks to everybody. There are tons of people in this industry doing things and making stuff happen that are so set on making their stuff happen that they don't have even the thought of going meet somebody else and talking to that other guy that might be able to actually put two products together and be a better product. And so that's where I think a lot of people, a lot of facilitators could find some positions and some opportunity to kind of make some things happen. And you know, again, once you kind of start making one or two things happen, you start getting more messages or more calls or people start, you know, asking for your opinion. And um, again, you, you position yourself to be someone that knows something that can do something. And um, I think that's the biggest thing right now in an emerging market like this and in a, an in, immature market and something that's still, um, again, there's not people that are full on experts about. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know. Um, 
I just wanted to kind of talk about it and just kind of explain, you know, that I think there's more than meets the eye when it comes to how do you get paid and how do you make a career of this. Um, that being said, I mean, you know, there's drone jobs coming out though that you're gonna need a degree for. Uh, and there's people about to start graduating college with degrees and this whole industry expert thing is gonna become people that went to school. So um, the biggest thing is get up off your butt and just make something happen. Do what you do. Chris, what's up, random? Yo, Chris, dog. Chris is a great example too. Another good example, somebody that just, man, he just grinds. He just, he won't let go. Dude's got, got, got positivity, got ideas, got stuff that makes, that helps people, that makes things happen. He's got a heart bigger than so many others. And, you know, sure, dude's been lumped. Dude's been beat up. Dude's been thrown aside and said, man, sorry, you can't do this right now. But guess what? Random's back. Dead band's back. He came back. If he could do it, man, come on. Get up off your butt. Do something. Boom, working together is where it's at. For real, Jesse. I mean, Jesse. Jamie. I called you Jesse all week at CES. Remember that shit? Um, so, no, Jamie, dog, is, you are correct. In fact, you're correct to a level so much bigger than FPV and all this stuff. You're so right for the drone industry, period. And I mean the consumer drone industry. Um, I've been having this conversation at work all week that, you know, there's no way to play catch up in this industry overnight. Um, there are people in these industries that have been doing this, that there's going to be pace setters and lead setters and the, the standards set by those folks. And there's no flip your sw switch overnight and get it done. Um, we have to do it together. Like we talked about at CES, man. I need a camera guy to build me a great camera because DJI has got Hasselblad, man. I can't compete with Hasselblad. So, you know, stuff like that. I mean, it, it, it's so true, though. And, and honestly, Jamie, it's what I've been preaching, dude. I've been preaching that for almost two years now. These, these, these companies, these, these FPV, even the vendors and, and all the organizing, directing and sanctioning bodies, multi-GPs, the IDRAs, the whatevers, they got to get together. Because until they get together and, and make something cohesively work together and do it, like present one product, that's what we're missing. We're missing that there's not one product, you know? It's what the ready to flies are all about. Everybody hates ready to flies, but the problem is, folks, we gotta have a low barrier entry point to have new users. New users aren't long-term money. New users are the first 30% of money. What 30% represents is a constant 30% of new user. We gotta turn those new users into long-time users. Now, that's how you make money long-term, but you got to get the people in the door. And to get the people in the door, we gotta have a product, a unified, solid product that's not just this guy's ready to fly, everybody's ready to fly, can go fly together, can fly at the same, you know what I mean? Not a spec, just a, a standard, a standard VTX, a standard receiver, a standard everything. There has to be standards. And until these guys get together and do that, honestly, they're gonna keep fighting each other. So, you know, another question I saw today posed was, why are other RC hobbies more expensive? Well, you know why? Because we kind of broke these guys here in RC. We actually forced the vendors in FPV to kill themselves, to not make money, to, to have to hustle every little cent they can get because we're so picky and we're so bitchy about, it's gotta be the cheapest. It's got, I can get it cheaper in 30 days over there. Fuck it, go get it, man. What these vendors need to do, jack up them prices back up. Not a lot, but make them, make them some money because if they're not making money, guys, they're gonna disappear. You think these cats wanna do this like for the rest of their life? Just, you think Pyro Flip and Surge and them cats wanna just hustle packages off? Hell no. He wants to go enjoy Dolma and watch him fly and go fly with him. Come on, man. We gotta get this stuff going. We gotta remember that together it works, apart it doesn't. But that's not what this was about. Again, this is about getting yourself some opportunities. Find your place, be you, make you happen, and you know, just worry about that. And I think that a lot of people will find that if you put yourself out there and you do and you ask and you make yourself available and do what you do, man, you know, um, things happen. I'm not promising that things will happen, but I don't know. There's plenty of cats out there making things happen and they, they seem to be doing, I think, a lot of what I'm doing, which is just head down, do what you do, get get things done. And sure, some people out there publicly, I'm out there a little publicly and I make videos and stuff. People think that I do this because I'm showing off. I'm not, I'm not at all. Um, I really don't have much time for this type of stuff anymore. It's why my content has suffered, but 
I still want to do it because I still genuinely believe that if one, two, three, four, five people out there hear this and say, hey, you know, I can do that too. Maybe, maybe I should do that. Then, hey, maybe you're the next dude to make something that is better than what we got today. And that's awesome. And that's all we should all want. Random, awesome dude. Yep, you're welcome, brother. Uh, like I said, I, I, I ain't never going to lie to you or nobody. We, we've had this talk. Um, you're a solid dude, man. Again, everybody takes their lumps. Everybody gets beat up and has mistakes. Uh, I never, ever thought that you were anything other than great. So uh, keep that shit up. Uh, awesome project. Sounds like you're working on it. Help a lot of people. Stay tuned. Sounds like you're doing something where you're going to favor for favor. So fly safe, fly smart, just fly. I'm at work. It only took 15 minutes to get here. I got to get in, all right? Peace.